Jumptron. Humanity's two longest lasting staples. The child, our legacy as a people, and the skateboard. I think it was made around the 80s or 90s. It's been around since then. So it's time we finally bring these two worlds together. That's right, today we're watching The Skateboard Kid, the film with the famous tagline, Why take the road when you can fly? This film was made in 1993 and features the voice of the late Dom DeLuise, who was the voice of such characters as Jeremy from Secret of Nim and Pizza the Hut from Spaceballs. In this flick, he voices a character named Rip, so I guess they were just trying to drive the point home. All right, let's quit wasting time and watch this, baby. I caught that, for real. Wow, that's one flashy intro. I can't wait for what's to follow. The Skateboard Kid, here we go. Featuring songs by the Trash Kittens. What is that, like a kitten you found in the trash? Either way, great band name, guys. Hmm, is that so? Yes, it does appear the back of that skateboard says power. Why though? Why is this the first shot of the movie? Oh, that's what I'm talking about right there. I remember when I rented out my local laser tag for the night of my birthday. Okay, Max. Let's rip. I'm a pretty cool dude. And that's just the facts. <laughs> So what, did they have some sort of coordinated plan here besides just skateboarding around? He looked like he had something really serious planned. Also, skateboarding inside all slowly like that is just, well, it's impractical at best and it just makes you look silly. Chicken wings, get your wings. Come and get a tasty little chicken wing. Okay, so their master plan was just, I guess, to mess with this guy who literally just stands there and says the words chicken wings over and over. I mean, they must have planned it in advance, because this kid hooks up the police car like he knows the police is going to chase them. Why don't they just pick another target? You know, like, out of the cop's line of sight? Hey! How you living, chicken boy? Well, first of all, that insult could have used some work. Second of all, the pain and humiliation I feel daily are immense. For someone like you to cut someone like me deeper, well... <laughs> You must have problems yourself, buddy, so I feel bad for you, and how fucking dare you say that to me! I'm gonna make you regret those goddamn words! So interspersed throughout the movie are these strange shots of skateboard tricks. Like all these shots they coordinated with the airplanes. I'm assuming they just rolled up to LAX and did this before the security showed up. I mean, half the tricks they do aren't even that impressive. They're just jumping around like idiots. What's this song trying to say? Skateboarder? Or perhaps this is a tribute song to the life and times of a man named Scott Border. Yeah, Scott yeah. Mr. Border's gonna really appreciate this. I just feel it. Yeah. It's gonna be great. Mill Creek, new life, clean air, all some small town values. Almost hitting a young boy nonchalantly and pretending it didn't happen. I feel like in the real shot, that was just as dangerous as it looked. Whatever you say, Dad. Yeah, whatever you say, Dad. Never mind this gaggle of skateboarders that for some reason are now following our car. Uh, Dad? How slow are you guys going that these kids can just roll up to your car window? Dad! Oh my god. I guess you really shouldn't have been wearing that chicken mask while skateboarding. You killed him. <laughs> Why'd he cross the road like that? Get to the other side, you Barney. Yeah, check out this stupid picture of your face. Also, our friend is actually dead. Oh god, it's those post-mortem spasms. <laughs> Very funny, guys. Oh, you were never dead at all. That was just a trick. A dirty trick by some dirty boys. Then you're not laughing, dudes. I was, but then you took your mask off. Those you gentlemen uh, know where Mill Creek is, do you? Mill Creek? Mm -hmm. I've never heard of Mill Creek. Have you ever heard of Mill Creek? 
Something tells me they don't know too much about Mill Creek. There is a Mill Creek. You know, it's back that way. Really? You know, 40 miles down that way, then you make a right. <laughs> So was that a sarcastic answer? I'm not sure how to take that. Dad. Oh no, there it is. It really is back that way. So why was his answer so weird and then he runs away? Thanks for the directions, dude. Excuse me, do you know how to get to 50th Street Station from here? Uh, yeah, you go down 10 blocks that way. Make a right, you can't miss it. <laughs> Are you with him? Mom used to always say. Yeah. Sometimes the thing you're looking for is staring you right in the face. Well, Mom sure used to say a lot of things that hold very little relevance to most situations. I'm telling you, I got a good feeling about this place. You'll see. You're gonna love this town. Uh-oh, you oh you think fell! You uh ah, whatever. You won't be needing that anyway. You just start her up and take Whoa, hey buddy, listen, Grandma don't need no help. She's about to get out there, start tearing up some asphalt. Just clear the way. Bye-bye. So now we meet this character, Dan, the usual sleazy car salesman type. Oh, Earl, <laughs> I love this car. <laughs> Seriously, he's not even doing it that well. This is like what I do at home when I think no one's watching and I'm pretending to be cool. Uh, in, in Mill Creek. Yeah. Wow. Well, you're just a real waste of fucking human life, aren't you? <laughs> Want it back? Give it! Come on! So next we cut to the kids from earlier messing with a neighborhood girl. The back, Slumbrain! Have a heart attack, Squirt. <laughs> Shut up! Ugly. Back off, Snake! Oh, Snake did not expect that. You startled him. He's like, oh my god, I'm sorry. Oh, Christ! So I guess the implication is that the father is doing poorly at his new job, so he was sent to direct a commercial? But isn't that like an upgrade? I don't know. Hey, Dad! Oh, damn! What is it, Zach? Dad, I need a loan. I know this is kind of short. I said not now, Zach. Hmm. No, you didn't. Zach. 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 Oh, Christ! And action. Howdy. I'm Big Dan Tanner. Now y'all probably remember my great-granddaddy, Dirty Dan Tanner. Once uh, committed armed robbery. Well, that's a shame. Sorry. So since our hero was framed by the bully, as seen here, everyone on set hates him. Especially this guy. Hey. Holy shit, he punched his skateboard clean in half. Well, you gotta be really angry to get that level of punch. I'm mad! But just in the nick of time, he's saved by a kind soul who gives him a lemonade and a pat on the back, welcoming him to the new town. Two. Listen, lady, I haven't got all day! I'm coming! Ah, what a nice lady. Seems like she's having a bit of a domestic with her spouse. Deadbeats are all alike. Please, I'll find it! Wait, what? She's just screaming at a random electrician as if it were a family member? And she just left him in there to give some kid lemonade? Apparently, she has some sort of issue with her electricity, like she hasn't paid for it or something like that. That's not my concern. Wait, what? What are you doing over there, Zach? No, no, not wait one minute. I gotta know what you're doing right now! No, I'm serious. Did, did, you, did you break something? Did you do something illegal? Who are you? It's not even obvious to the audience what's going on here. How exactly has this kid, Zach, figured out how to fix her anomalous electricity situation the moment he met her? Oh my god, lady, he's drinking your fish! Oh, you're just fine with him drinking your pet fish, and that's funny to you! That's a joke! No reaction! Also, this was, what, part of the plan? Y you did that first? Y you went and first thing, you put her pet fish in the drink first of all, assuming that she would be okay with her pet fish dying and that he would drink this at all and not see the fish. And also, when you broke the glass with the rock, how did you replace the glass? Were you carrying an extra glass with you to put on there? Sometimes, the thing you're looking for is staring you right in the face. <laughs> oh my god. Are you my ghost mom? <laughs> Now, what can I do for you? Huh? Excuse me, what did you just say? Well, I'm not going to let my hero get out of a place like this without a reward. Cut it! Cut it quick! Cut the f 
filmed this is getting too weird and wild. Also, it's extra strange because she just said the thing his mom said. So, since Zack's skateboard has been broken by way of being delicately punched in actual half, she decides to give him another one she has just lying around. I have the perfect thing. Pretty groovy, huh? What, you have some decency blow the other way, maybe? The hell? What's that supposed to be? Excuse me? Oh, oh, sorry about that. What's that supposed to be? This is crack. Once belonged to the amazing Farini. Who? So then, like, immediately after this scene, there's a montage of him cutting up a bunch of shit and putting it on the skateboard. Why? What prompted this? I mean, shouldn't there be a few scenes where the kids make fun of it first or something to give them a reason to work on it? Like, I don't know, if one of them said, Wow, that skateboard looks pretty stupid objectively. It looks like some sort of clown board. And then Zack was like, I'll show you. I'll make the best skateboard of all time, and then I'll kill all of you and hide the bodies. I mean, wait, not that last part. Like, he literally even just goes and slaps a motor to this thing out of nowhere for no reason. And it's not like it was established that Zack was some sort of whiz kid or anything like that. He's just a normal kid. I mean, we're talking about... About the guy who has a hat that says wow on it, okay? Rummage time! You know what? I don't need to know about rummage time. So, Zack takes his new skateboard out for a test run when he runs into trouble with a neighborhood gang. Then, all of a sudden... Zack, Booby, it's your turn to attack! What does a man do when halfway through a movie, a skateboard begins to speak? What does a man do then? Don't sweat it. These guys are bonnies. So finally, now we know what Dom DeLuise had to do with this monstrosity. You didn't have to do it, Dom! Who forced you? Did you need a paycheck? Don't get me started! Who is this, Tyler? I don't know. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. So now, as if the movie wasn't confusing enough before, we got a wisecracking skateboard from Brooklyn babbling half-assedly like he took too many Percocet this morning. It doesn't even make any sense! Alright, at least Snake's got the right idea though. Sit back, eat a taco, watch the fireworks, huh? You know, if like one guy here had a car, this would all be fine. What, you're just gonna stop chasing your target now? This guy gets a little oil on him, you're all in hysterics? What are you, actual babies? So, back at the house, Zack talks to his skateboard. Hello? Rip? Good night, Rip. Hey. Oh my god, what happened? Hey. Don't speak over me like that, pal, you scared me. Hey, Rip, Zack. This isn't really happening. Believe it! That'll be a bit hard on account of everything about this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Of course I do. I wasn't assembled yesterday. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, wait, you know, actually, yeah, I think you were, though. Hell, I think you might have been assembled today. Grab on! The sky's the- Ugh, I don't wanna. It's weird and creepy. This little thing, it's like the main thing he uses to move stuff around. Did they just use whatever they had in the garage when they were designing this? Wait, cool. Wow! This magical skateboard is mildly impressive. So, as expected, the skateboard and the boy become friends in a story as classic as the Jungle Book. And also, as expected, the dad is now a clown. I'm ready to rock, I'm ready to roll, I'm full of spunk and full of dough! That's precisely the problem, sentient skateboard! Why don't you go home until your mother she wants you? Hey, no, wait, my ball bearings are just loosening up! Oh yeah, no chance she's leaving, Zack. Sorry, skateboard will like some young. Nobody asks you to stick your nose into my business. It is my business. My mom's the one who gave them to you. Maggie's your mother? Well, they ran the tests, and it looks like Jenny is going to need the surgery sometime next year. I swear to God, movies always do this if the screenwriter doesn't know how to manufacture meaningful drama. It always comes back to mom's dead, my dad died, she needs surgery, my papa is a clown. So just a quick sum up, the used car salesman has a lot of money and tries to woo the mother of this girl into marrying him because if she does, all her mortgage and medical bills will be magically taken care of. She resists, of course, because he's this guy. Look at Frankie boy, your fate is sealed tonight. He barely even made his target with that throw. 
Is it just mandatory to do things in a way evolution did not account for to be a cool skateboarder from the 90s? Yeah, that's a smart boy. Just jam all that metal in there. See what happens, huh? See what comes out. But the dad comes home with the clown hair glued to his head. Another tragic scene ensues where Zack tries to remove it and things get real for a second. Take it off. Zack! It's your problem. Unbeknownst to Clown Man Boy, Zack is invited over the mother and daughter, making the clown hair situation extra hilarious, if you know what I'm talking about. Can I take your coats or anything? Oh, now I feel for the guy here. Uh, that's the worst. You just want to hang up somebody's coat in your closet, couch falls out. I mean, it makes you look like an asshole, embarrasses them for standing there watching that monstrosity. One time, uh, I was trying to hang up a lady's coat, a uh, couch fell out of my closet. Couldn't look her in the eye for a year. That meal was really good, but all of a sudden, I don't feel so good! Oh, God, what is going on in here? Oh, stop. Come on, quit that. Quit it. No, I said stop! You're freaking me out now! Can I help you? It looks like you're the one that needs the help, Tyler. So yeah, now Team Cowboy Douchebag has figured out that Team Clown Boy Good Guys are trying to steal the girls away from them with the lady hiding over here in the corner like some sort of abused housewife. And now, the rivalry between them is real. Okay, Bill, what can I do for you? It's about your mortgage. Radical! I just co-signed that damn loan. So Dan the Cowboy finally convinces Maggie to marry him in order for her to pay off her mortgage and save her daughter. Jenny is reasonably upset at hearing this news, so the skateboard tells her jokes to make her happy. Flattery will get you everywhere. I couldn't agree more. It was like, it was like closing the greatest deal of my life, Earl. Well, I don't get why you gotta marry her now that you're holding her mortgage anyway. I don't have even the slightest clue what you could have said there. And besides, <laughs> we'll get great granddaddy's treasure back. You'll get your great-grandfather's treasure back? So this was about treasure the whole time? You waited 47 minutes for this shit? Wait, why'd you have to marry her for it then? It's in your family. What's she got to do with it? Does she even know about it? What's the talking skateboard for? Who's the, who's the talking skateboard is? Great-granddaddy left behind just so us later tanners would know. So wait, you, you have the map to the treasure as well? Buddy, you're, you're all set. No! I got scared! It's a scarecrow! Figures! Scud. That's good shit right there. I'm gonna need every last drop of this. So blah blah blah, more pointless conflict, more skateboarders, and long story short, we're here at the wedding while Jenny hates her life. And this woman in holy marriage. I gotta show you something. Uh, hi darling, what do you got there? You know what it is, Chia Head. Do you, Maggie? Take Dan to be your lawfully wedded husband. Awfully wedded, you mean. <laughs> it's treasure map to Ancestor's fortune, and he's only marrying you to get it. What? Is that true, Dan? Wait, what? Is that... Is you not marry me for my Ancestor's treasure, Dan? Is that true? It's not about love, it's about just coordinates to treasure? Do you, Maggie, take Dan to be your lawfully wedded husband? <laughs> I do. Not. Oh! <laughs> Have you all gone insane? Go get him. But why why do you have to marry her for the treasure? They didn't explain it. Why didn't he just use the map? What does the treasure have to do with marriage? Oh you can fly now. What? <laughs> Thank you so much for flying here. Why? <laughs> ah, why? Oh, the skateboard broke and died. That's unfortunate. Oh, his hat really says mom upside down. That's unfortunate. Oh, I watched this whole fucking thing. That's unfortunate. I guess you could say it was staring him right in the face the whole time. Or at least it was staring other people in the face, but mainly if they were looking at it upside down in a mirror. Zach, you really are my hero. It's a genetic Wow, what a great film. And now, in honor of the true skateboard boy, I present you with this homage. A boy 
This episode of JonTron was made possible by the wonderful people at Audible.com. Now, if you don't know about them, they are an Amazon audiobook company. You can listen to your audiobooks on a computer or take it on the go with your phone or tablet. It's all connected to your one account. So, <laughs> this month I recommend to you The Revenant, a novel of revenge. If you've seen the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio recently, uh, The Revenant, it's the book that inspired the film. If you go to my specialized link right now, audible.com slash JonTron, you can get that book free as well as a free 30-day trial. I implore you! Please do it. Yeah, no.